the Davy Jane Doe, identified as Lori Jane Kersey. This one begins in Davy, Florida, on February 18, 1984. A person was walking by a canal in a rural area that is listed as the 2600 block of Southwest 130th Avenue in Davie. It was here they noticed what appeared to be a person floating in the water. The area has more going on there now, but in 1984, it was basically a bunch of orange groves alongside of a canal. Upon examination, it was determined there was foul play. She had blonde hair and a gap between her two front teeth. To fill that gap, a dentist had put in some sort of composite material between the two teeth to hide the gap. She had denim Foxy Trail brand jean shorts, but her top half was unclothed, and she had been asphyxiated. The thing about this, too, is that our Jane Doe is not the only woman found in the area canals at that time. Another woman, for instance, was found only two miles away. In that case, she was identified as Carrie Weldron and she had been found in March of 1985, which is the year after our Jane Doe was found. And this was on the corner of Southwest 121st Avenue and Southwest 36th Street. Her COD was different, however. It's listed as vehicular. Her case is still unsolved and needs someone to call in on the tip line. But those two times also were not the only times in the canal. Three years after our Jane Doe, a third woman was found, and her name was Marilyn Decker also found in Davie, Florida. This was October 25th, 1987. So we are talking 1984, 85, and 87. The final woman, Marilyn Decker, was found at the 3000 block of Flamingo Road, just a few miles away. She too was asphyxiated, but she was also with what I'll just say on here was a sharp implement, starting with a K. Her case also remains unsolved. And in the third case, her family would say that she was hanging out with the wrong crowd but it had been hiding it from them. So this may be similar with the other cases. It's hard to say. The same number for Crime Stoppers works for all three cases. So if anyone has information on any of them, it's important. The police went on to say that all these cases were in vacant areas at the time without buildings or witnesses. It was pretty easy for whoever it was who dumped the women, whether it's one person or multiple people. It also states that the area they were found in was actually considered part of the Everglades at the time. So the question remains as to whether these women are related or not, if it was some sort of a coincidence. I'd love to know what you think. It seems entirely plausible to me that they could be related. On the plus side, in the end, all three women were at least identified. Although with R. Jane Doe, it took a little bit longer. In her case, the case kept dragging on concerning her identity, and they would eventually send it to Parabon Nano Labs. This would eventually lead to Lori Jane Kersey's daughter, Megan Smith someone who'd been searching for her mother all of this time. Cece Moore, who many are familiar with from her work with Parabon, first contacted Lori's sister, who was shown the recreation here. From that recreation, she was pretty sure that she had found what happened to Lori. The final match would come with a link from Lori's daughter, who would say she always knew something happened to her mother, that she hadn't just walked away. She would say growing up, she was told that her family hadn't heard from her since 1983, after she left Massachusetts. This was, of course, before she was found, but it's hard to say exactly when she went missing. Memory can be faulty, and it was a long time ago. We know that Lori grew up in Massachusetts. We know that Megan's father met her mother in a nightclub when Megan's mom was just 17. The two never married, and she would later go on to marry a man who she met in 1982 while she worked at a different nightclub in the area, eventually marrying into what is described as a prominent and notorious crime family from Boston although they do not name the family she married into. This, of course, gives the police a place to start looking, maybe just for Lori's case, but maybe for all of the women. That said, she was found about 1,500 miles or 2,400 kilometers from where she'd lived. It's definitely a long way to transport somebody. So there's probably more to the story. It's not a small distance. It'd take about 23 hours to drive nonstop from where it's believed she started to where she was found. But one article mentions her leaving Massachusetts. This one's a little bit twisted up as far as the facts go. So please take it all with a grain of salt. We do know that Lori was 23 when her life was taken, though I'm not sure how old she was when she was married or how long she was married. She was last seen by her family on Thanksgiving Day in 1983. Two different stories of what happened to her would be given to Megan, her daughter, about her mom over the years as Megan grew up. 
Both of those stories would have her leaving Massachusetts. One of her aunts would say that Lori's best friend's husband dropped her off at the airport. However, others would say she was picked up by law enforcement with a suggestion that she may have entered the Witness Protection Program, which is something most of her family seemed to believe had happened, which would explain why she was not in contact. Law enforcement now doesn't know what to believe about it, saying there were a lot of rumors, and right now they're trying to find the truth in them. No one knows for sure how Lori left, or even when, or why. However, they would say that they have identified a person of interest in the case who is still alive, though so far that name has not been released. Lori's daughter Megan would speak out at her relief of finally knowing what happened to her mom, saying she's overwhelmed with the knowledge. She had actually pretty much resigned herself to believing that she would never know what happened to her mom. She said she often agonized over what her mother may have gone through, but all she knows for sure is her mom dropped her off for a weekend and didn't come back. Megan is now a mother herself. The rumor or belief that law enforcement picked her up is the reason that Lori wasn't reported missing. I provided the number for Crime Stoppers, and that number applies to all three cases. All of them deserve justice. Lori Kersey's case, outside of her identification, has gone unsolved for 39 years. Carrie's case has gone unsolved for 38 years. Marilyn Decker's case has gone unsolved for 36 years. May they rest in peace. Lori Jane Kersey went unidentified for 39 years. The Whitewater John Doe, identified as Michael Alonzi. A Colorado University student was out doing field work near Whitewater, Colorado, and it was here that they stumbled upon a skull, but there were no other remains. They weren't able to determine very much, which is probably pretty expected given all they had was a skull, but they were sure that it belonged to a male. But of course, his COD is even a mystery without finding any more of his remains. There was little that could be determined. They would need to use advanced DNA testing and genetic genealogy. And in the end, this would lead to a potential family. So this ended up with a woman giving her father back his name. And that answer came in October of 2023. This one doesn't appear to be super accurate in a lot of articles. One says he's 49 when he passed away. Another place him as 39. His family last heard of him around the 1990s or the early 2000s, so he had likely passed a decade earlier, and that would probably place him at 39. We do know he was born on December 10, 1961. His family would share that it was around that time that they last saw him. The circumstances surrounding his death are unclear, and the investigation is continuing. So, of course, once again, I'm going to ask for people to call if they knew him. It's really important that somebody come forward with some information. Michael John Alonzi was missing for around 20 to 25 years. He went unidentified for 12. Had he lived the life he deserved, he would be 62 years old today. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching and listening. If you aren't subscribed, please take a moment to do so hitting the bell so you are notified of new videos. And thank you all for leaving comments and emojis to help with engagement. It all pushes the channel to get suggested to new people. And I appreciate that so much. Take care of yourselves and each other.